who's here, how many years have you been painting with me? And then I started thinking, all of you at home were thinking, wow, she's got these artists who've been painting five and ten years, and that's not fair because you all feel like beginners at home. So I decided to ask Emma because she's calling herself a real beginner yep. today. Yep, and I have no years of painting. <laughs> no, okay, so no years of painting, experience. just like you all at home. And um, she's a little nervous about it because yeah. of, all beginners are always nervous. They think it's going to be really hard, and I promise I'm going to try to keep it really easy for you. And again, this is you've got the instructions in the photo at home. So Emma's going to join us here, and I know she's going to do a great job, just like you all at home. And we'll get started here at step one. My snowman and me. My snowman and me. All right, Emma, here we go. And I'm going to start right off the bat by doing something I don't usually do on any of my projects. So I hope that doesn't make you nervous. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to move this up just a speck in the camera here. And usually I draw with a neutral color, but last night when I was doing this practice painting, I noticed that the neutral color I was using was mixing in with my blue. So if this is your first project, You'll be painting with a little bit different color. If you all have been painting with me for quite a while, you'll notice that I'm choosing a different color to start our drawing with. So first thing you want to do is get your brush a little bit wet. And I'm, I'm always using the number four flat, uh, flat in these projects because it comes to a nice chisel end so you can draw those little skinny lines. And it also has a little tight little um, pointed corner so that you can do little things like the little nose and the buttons. So it's a very versatile brush, so that's what we're gonna start with today. And I'm gonna have you, if your brush is a little bit wet, I'm gonna have you, well, first of all, let's do this. I wanna do a really light blue. So let's pick up with your palette knife, just the very end of your palette knife, a little bit of white, and lay it down on your palette. And the palette knife, I always say it's like a little spatula, so just the very end of it is kind of bendy. So you don't want to have paint way up here in the back. You just try to keep it right here at the top of your, you know, the bendy part of that knife. And then I'm going to have you reach over here to this cerulean blue and you barely, barely, barely tap any blue on there. If you can see, I've got just the tiniest little micro speck because it, it has, it's so strong. Look at that. That little speck made that um, almost medium blue. And that is what we're going to draw with today. So we just start with a, a simple shape drawing. And obviously the snowman is going to be really simple because it's three circles. Hello. That's perfect. perfect. And then I'm going to take that corner, that little corner of the brush I was talking about earlier, and I'm going to do what we call um, marking our parameters. So in a drawing class, you would get in the habit of just marking a halfway dot on each side, and that'll kind of help us figure out where to place the items on the canvas. Just gives us a, a guideline. So for example, I can see from the halfway dot here that our snowman is to the left. Really, I'd say his, the bottom part of his circle starts right above that, right in that halfway line. So here's that halfway line, and I'm gonna say the bottom part of him, we're we'll just make a dot where that side of the circle is. The bottom part of the circle here, let's just come over about, oh, about a, one, one third of that direction here. Just make a little dot for the bottom of him. I don't wanna to get too complicated, it's just a circle. And then coming over about two inches from this left side, make the other dot. And then even that out, and we're gonna just connect those dots to be our bigger circle. And 
It is December here in Louisville and it's been like 72 degrees all week. Yes. And today got a little colder. <laughs> Let's bring that down a little bit lower right there. Make it, make it a little bit. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it was more like an oval. Mine was. <laughs> So then I'm looking at the his midsection. There we go. And, um, so we're going to start that circle here, and then at the top of that circle, just comes up. Let's make it about. I, I've got my. Oh, uh, let's see. About a third of the way up from here to here. Now, I'm not trying to get too specific. Just make that another medium circle. The thing is, we don't want our snowman too small because we don't have much going on in this canvas, so we might as well just go ahead and make him kind of almost go from top to bottom of the canvas. Now, the head is more like an oval because, see, he's got a hat on covering mm -hmm. up the top of his head. Yes. So let's make a little shrimpy oval. There you go. And then there's the little fur, little white fur part here. And then I, I would just say, I'm gonna describe the top of the hat as one skinny triangle, like kind of going this way. So here, see this little skinny triangle? And then there's like a kind of a bigger triangle where it flies out here. A little ball at the end. And I'm not gonna draw in the facial features or the buttons we can we can find those later without a drawing. So okay. I just kind of did that as a skinny triangle here, mm -hmm. and then another little triangle coming off the side like that. And then a scarf. I'm just gonna kind of make like an S curve, and make it a fat S. Yeah, that's looking good. You got it. I'm trusting the process. Oh, and something I always um, try to repeat over and over and over is when we're painting, we've got these nice long brushes. Oh, yeah. Try to hold it back a little bit because when we get here, we yeah, do start putting more moment. pressure and, and then the, that kind of puts pressure on the bristles. So we want okay. to hold back and it's more important in the painting phase than in the drawing step. Okay. Um, and I'm not even going to put the little arms in there. Well, maybe I will. Let's go ahead and put the arms in here so I know about where they're going to be. That's using that nice little chisel end where I just draw a line with a very like a little chisel edge, edge of that brush. Yeah, so you see, um, you know what I do? Just go in. I just push it real hard right oh, there okay. and it pinches it back together. Yeah, so you can pinch. I was showing Emma that if you um, wipe your brush on your paper towel and you can kind of get back just kind of keep wiping it to get back to that little sharp shape and then you can take a little bit of that paint remember just use a little water here and there to thin that paint down in this step and then I'm once you get caught up with that everybody I'm going to put the horizon line in between the, the snow and the you know ground and then the sky and that's just above that center dot so in painting and in composition we find that Things that fall flat center are, um, like when the horizon line is flat center or straight smack in the center is a little less interesting. The eye likes a little more variety than that. Just, that's just the way the human brain works. So I'm gonna take that horizon line a little bit above your center line dot. So you have a little more ground and a little less sky. And that was the drawing, see, it wasn't hard. And if you need a little water in that, mm -hmm. you can sometimes just get a little more water. This, and this is like pretty much the only stage where we do thin the water, thin the paint down with water, just so it'll move a little easier and be nice and thin. And I'll let you get caught up, and I'm going to um, let you all at home get caught up, and we'll meet you back here for step two, which is going to be the background. My snowman and me. All right, well, Emma's doing a good job. This is so fun for me to see um, 
beginners here. Like I said, a lot of times I have students with a lot of experience coming in just to hang out and paint with me on these lessons. But it's fun to see Emma's doing just yeah. fine here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is the background. So we're going to start with the sky. And I'm going to say, let's make three colors for the sky. And, and you'll hear me say that for almost everything we paint, let's make three colors because that's going to give us depth and dimension. So you can see that we've got kind of a deeper shadowy look here and then maybe some uh, lighter snow blowing in here. And it just gives it much more dimension. So three, three shades is a good way to start. So we're going to make three shades of this blue up here in the sky. So first thing I'm going to do is move that watery paint out of the way. I'm going to reach in here with my palette knife and I'm going to pick up a pretty big hunk of white and I'm going to put that down. Pretty big hunk. All right. And then I, that's going to be end up being our lightest shade, which is going to be this over here. And then I'm going to make three piles. So I'm going to pick up some more white, but this is only going to have this, this little pile is only going to have half as much white. And then over here, I'm going to put down just a teeny bit of white, and that's going to be where we make our darker color. And we can tweak all that later. So that's just, we're going to have a light color, a medium, and then a darker. And we're going to take our palette knife. This cerulean blue in this kit is so strong. You saw that when we made the drawing color. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take the tip of my knife. Actually, for the lighter color, remember, we just barely had anything on there. I mean, barely, that's, that's, I can't even hardly see what I've got on there. And that's gonna make a really pretty light, really nice, light, light, light blue, which will be the snow, like I said, kind of blowing in back here in the background. I don't know if we're gonna see snow here this winter. I just, I don't know, it's been so warm. <laughs> it's been so warm. They did say like, it's tonight or tomorrow night, it's gonna drop fast and we have a small chance of snow, but then again, not until it's like, middle of next week we have another chance of that. So, so I miss the snow. I know. And um what's so strange is over the weekend we had um like these really warm temperatures and girlfriends were texting me pictures of like yellow butterflies flying around their patio and I was texting yeah, them pictures so of these purple flowers that bloom in the middle of summer for me. They were blooming in my backyard and it's December twenty seventh. So yeah, on Christmas we were like killing flies that were like, yes, flying in the I house. I'm like, it feels like it's summertime. Right now. I know. If you, sometimes if a pile's too dark, you all hear me say this quite a bit. If a pile's too dark or incorrect in any way, I usually cut it in half, put half of it over here, and try to fix a smaller pile. Because when you fix a pile that's already kind of big, it's just and if you don't go in the right direction, you're just going to have a bigger, bigger, bigger pile that's not right. So. Here's our light. Now I'm gonna reach over here with my knife and get a little more of that blue this time. So I've got not as much white, and then I've got, and now this is gonna sound kind of funny, but this blue is so bright, and that's why I put all these colors out here on the palette. You never know what you're gonna need, and I think that this needs to reach over here, and um, there's, technical names for these colors like for example this this is called burnt umber mm -hmm. but just so you all can grab it a little faster and keep up with me I'll call it chocolate brown chocolate so brown. <laughs> just a little bit of chocolate brown slash burnt umber on the tip of your knife it's just going to dull that blue down to be a little bit more of a realistic sky color and the reason we do that is I don't want to overpower the snowman. So sometimes we have to make a decision in a painting. Oh, I'd love to have super, super, super bright colors. But then when we finish, we wonder what's wrong. And we think, well, I, you know, those big bright background colors overpowered my snowman and he's supposed to be the focal point. So that's why so I'm dulling it down with a tiny dab of that chocolate brown. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it just changes that color to be a little bit more like this, where it's kind of grayed out. Mm -hmm. So anytime you put a blue and a brown together, it makes a sort of a muddy grayer color version of that. So I really like, I like my light color and I like my medium here today. And then probably, we're, I'm looking at the size of the sky, we're probably gonna have to make more of these, but. Mm -hmm. So obviously the darker pile has even less white, which is why I start here with this, this little bit of white and a little more of the blue this time. 
And then let's put a little more of that chocolate brown in there to gray that out. And I think I put too much chocolate brown in there, so I'm gonna put a little more blue back in. It's just kind of trying to find a percentage and a balance that you like. And I think it's a little too dark, so I'm gonna grab a little white. I think I like that. And I can tell already, and I think I remember from doing this last night, I had to make up quite a bit more paint. So I'm repeating myself to students who are with me for a long time, but I repeat it to my students who've been here with me 10 and 15 years. The paintbrushes are long and the oil paints are heavy. So you've got a, a, a tool here that's strong enough to pick up the oils, but once you pick it up with this tool, your brush, and you go to put it on your canvas, you wanna be very gentle because that way you're gonna get a beautiful, luscious brush stroke. Um, if you push really hard, you won't get anything but just flat color. So uh, I, I, t I tell everybody kind of hold this about two thirds back and um, your brush stroke comes from your shoulder like a tennis or a golf swing. And that's gonna keep you from putting all this strength and pressure that you've got in your wrist and your hand on there. So you're gonna get really soft, pretty brush strokes. And to treat the bristles nicely, we usually pick up our paint by pulling forward like you're using a little broom to sweep. And then you've picked up your paint. And then it's on this, you know, you've got to kind of flip it over mm -hmm. and start spreading it. And it should spread like, you know, room temperature butter. And that's why they call oils the buttery medium. That color looks a little dark to me. I'm just going to dip right into my white and spread that in there to lighten that up a little bit. Think. So you should feel like, um, so uh, Emma, do this, take your paint that like, you've got like at the end of your knife and put mm -hmm. it in a bigger pile like that. Scoop it all together is guess what I'm saying. It's easier to sweep with the broom action. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then very good, you're spreading it. And then I like to use little kind of crisscross strokes. The canvas, this cotton canvas has a little rough texture to it um, and it, so you need to really spread that painting to cover up that canvas. Spread that paint. Um, I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. And the crisscross stroke kind of just looks pretty. And you can, depending on how many times you um, tap that stroke, you can blend it in and blend it in further and further. Or some people like a really bold stroke like that, where you know some paintings we're gonna have strokes where we don't blend them in. But I think for this soft sky, the more you tap on that paint you put down, the softer and blend, more blended it will get. But again, I'm not putting any pressure. I'm not gonna worry too much about where those little stick fingers are. Don't have to worry about going around them too carefully. And just kind of go up to the snowman as close as you can. So I'm switching a little bit. I'm going to start switching a little bit from the dark to the medium as I go from left to right. I still need to add a little bit in there. So can you feel that paint kind of sliding? Here, there, here's another thing. I always, I forgot, I have to keep repeating these to everybody, but if the, if the paint, flat surface of the paintbrush is more almost parallel to the canvas versus a 90 or 45 degree angle, so it's, you know, it's hard because you're so used to using chalk or, or, or markers. Mm -hmm. So see if you can't lower that angle of the brush and then you can just okay. really sweep that paint. And you'll really feel that paint sliding. So you see the difference mm -hmm. there? And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my lighter color and start from this right corner and move towards the middle. And it really, oh, here's another thing I tell my students here. Mm -hmm. We should never hear the brush <laughs> on the canvas. Cause if you, and you'll just, you'll feel that paint sliding. You can, mm. and like I said, the more you tap, the more it'll blend in. So you can push it down into that darker color as much as you want by just, 
But you see how you hear that slap? You feel that sliding? Yes. Instead of that, I might have put too much on. So it's all part of the learning process, but mm -hmm. in class, uh -huh. when I have a new student and everybody, I mean, nobody, oh, everybody just adores all the new people. In fact, uh, Emma's mom, Tracy, came new into with us last year. She's been painting before, but she joined mm -hmm. us last year. And, uh, she's a fabulous painter, but um, sometimes you'll hear somebody where they're, you hear that scratching <laughs> noise and everybody in the room's like, uh-oh, somebody needs to <laughs> get more paint under their brush and then you won't hear that noise. So, and believe me, I'm guilty of it. Every single thing I say to my students, I'm guilty of almost on a weekly, daily basis because we have to just keep reminding ourselves. But hey, I'm, I'm kind of liking the sky. Yeah. I, have, I probably have some light color I could share with you to finish your uh, right side. So the, one of the key things is like if your pile is all scooped together, or just maybe even sometimes you can sweep three, two, three or three times and get enough paint yeah. on there that you really have it kind of loaded all at the bottom like that and then it can just sweep on there. came out a little different from the color I had last night, but so what I might do because I'm seeing that this looks um, the color has a temperature it can be warm or cool so you know you can see obviously that this bright yellow is very warm um, but this this purpley red is what we call a very cool color, or this blue ultramarine is very cool. And I'm looking up here at my cerulean, and I feel like it's really warm, and this is a cool snow scene. So I'm gonna do something a little tricky. I'm gonna take that corner of my brush. I'm not even gonna worry what paint's on here. I'm gonna take a mm -hmm. little corner of my brush and dip into that deeper blue called ultramarine blue, and that's a really cool blue. And I might just spread some of that up in there. And it'll cool that down so it looks more like a winter night. Maybe in the directions, I will say maybe to mix a speck of that blue. It changes it so much. See how that makes mm -hmm. it cooler, less like a summer sky and more like a winter sky. And I think I'm gonna pause the video here and let you all at home and Emma here get caught up a little bit. I, I, I paint a little fast, <laughs> but that keeps the videos shorter too, so you guys can just pause and not use up as much storage in your computer and all that by having these long videos. So I'm keeping the video a little shorter and because I do move a little faster, but then you guys at home just pause and join back in with me when you're ready. Okay, we are back now to do the foreground here area, which is the snow. And so the blue formula is gonna be a little bit different, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and make three shades, a light, a medium, and a dark. Uh, I think in these shades, I will um, definitely go ahead and put that little bit of that, more of that uh, deep ultramarine, um, you know, dark, dark, dark blue to kind of cool that, that color down. So first color we're gonna make, I'm gonna pick, take with my palette knife and we're gonna pick up a good bit of white. Um, we're gonna add pure white later. You can see where I drug some pure white in there. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and make our light, medium, and dark and we'll add the pure white later. So there's a pretty big hunk of white. So the lightest color is gonna have the biggest hunk of white. And again, just the littlest bit of the cerulean effect. I might even use up a little of the cerulean left over in my sky. And then I'm going to take the tip of that knife and we're going to add a little bit of that cool blue. And I think that's going to be a nice cool white. Definitely cooler than what we had up above. A little more of that. And then the medium shade, um, 
less white this time and more of the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use up the little leftover sky up there for my cerulean for this, this blue here. And then a little more of that purple because we're gonna go a little darker. I didn't call it purple. It's the deep cool blue, which I use to make purple. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little more So the light one was just um, mostly white with a tap of the cerulean blue, the medium blue, and a tap of that cool blue, just tap, tap of each of those. And then for the darker one, it's the same formula, but we've got less white. Okay. And then for the darker one, we're gonna go even less white. So very little white and more of the two blues. So all we're doing, same formula, just changing percentages. And then I'm gonna do something really different here at the end. I'm gonna to try to make these even cooler. Since it's snow on the ground, we're gonna go even cooler. So yeah, the third pile is even less white. All right. Oh, you're in the middle one, good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's why I said we've got to bring those tubes of white over here with us. So go ahead and squeeze some more out. I'll probably need some too. All right. um, so Emma, what we're going to do, I, do you see how these on the ground mm -hmm. are a little more purple? Like see how purple the snowman is? Yeah. So I'm to do that, I'm going to take these formulas that I've already got. Actually, I'm going to add a little more white into this one. And I'm going to add a little bit of red because red and blue make purple. So again, I'm gonna take the tip of this knife with the smallest little bit of this very strong red color and mix that in there. And you know, it just turned the slightest bit purple, a little bit cool. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the darker pile. Just slide my knife in there, pick up the littlest bit. Turning that blue into a cool purpley blue. And it's so pretty, it really just made such a difference. All right. Again, you know, this is just a general formula to start with. Sometimes we get it over here on the canvas and think we make want to make changes. And actually, step four, usually or the last step in any of my projects, is where we Evaluate and see if we want to make some changes, which we can do right on the canvas. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the sweeping of my brush. Like I'm going to lift it up like I'm sweeping with a broom. And look at the size of that big hunk I got there. See? Mm -hmm. And we're just going to spread that along. And these water-based oils that come in this kit are just um, so smooth and creamy. They really slide like they're supposed to. So... There's so many brands of paint out there. Not very many in the water soluble that I sell in this kit or send to you in this kit. Um, I'm gonna switch to the darker color and just kind of start medium color just here and there. Alternating little banks of snow. But there aren't very many uh, of the water soluble choices out there and this one seems to be one of the best unless you're buying the really nice designer series. Um, but some of those can even be a little dry. They've made a lot of improvements in the water-based oils and I really enjoy them for these projects and I enjoy them for traveling. And then I'm gonna take the darkest color and just kind of make some little snow, little waves in there. And then I'll start blending them together a little bit because I'm getting maybe too much paint on here, which is something I never say. I love having too much paint. It's really slippery. So there are little highlights in the top of these little snow banks and the darker color makes little shadows. I left a little blank space right here at the very top of the horizon. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm gonna come back with that pure white. Oh, Just okay. kind of makes it look like it's glowing back there. So 
So Emma's a student at the University of Lowell here. I am. And I'm a marketing major. She's a marketing <laughs> major, so she can come back and help me with my marketing. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's been yeah, after I learned more. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I have learned so much about e-commerce marketing. I never knew I would have to learn so much, but it's so interesting. It is, yeah. They they have it down to a science. Like if I have so many visitors to my website in a day, you can almost guarantee if you're successful, I'll guarantee a certain percentage will buy. Mm -hmm. So that's a successful website. But the percentage is so small, so you really have to drive your traffic and get those visitors with your Instagram and Facebook ads. Uh -huh. It's a whole new world out there. Of course, YouTube and TikTok are playing a big role in marketing these days as well. But I think Emma's learning all the business basics at this time. <laughs> yep. Just finished my first economics class. It was a quite a journey. <laughs> it's a lot. Since I majored in design and architecture and art, I never really had a lot of business and economics classes at all. Mm. So when I started this business, I didn't need it for design and architecture, but when I started this business, I really had a big learning curve. It's interesting on Facebook now, I can, we can run what they call a carousel of ads. So you can run five or six different ads at the same time, really as many as you want. But if you design them each differently, like one's a video and one's a still picture and one shows what we call um, a customer, you know, using customer generated um, video, something that engages the viewer. And then maybe, you, like I said, you run some with just still pictures and some with music. And anyway, at the end of the week, you could compare through analytics, how each of the five ads were running and which ones were more successful. And then the next week you tweak everything. Yeah. And it's, it's just, just all amazing. amazing. Learning what works and what doesn't work. Exactly. Just constantly changing it. And that's kind of the one good thing my art and design background helped with is, um, you know, we were constantly working, even in design with graphics. If I was to design a hospital, they would want me in on all the signage and the graphics for the stationery and the menus and the hospital and mm. um, so I've had a good background in the creative side of it so my ads run pretty well uh, but it is still a learning curve when I first started this I thought oh everyone wants to learn to paint I won't even have to run an ad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, I've made so many more hilly hills and vales in my snow here on this one because I was just getting carried away and having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that pure white I was talking about and try to maybe smooth out some of those and make them a little bigger. Doesn't matter. I just think I got too much blue in there. Your, your Marie kit comes with a titanium white and a zinc white. Um, Titanium, well, it says zinc titanium and plain zinc. Zinc's a cooler white. You will probably barely notice the difference. Titanium has just a little more warmth to it. It's a slightly creamier and less kind of icy white. But either one, of, both of them will work for this project, and both of them work for almost all the projects I send you. So I'm kind of glad they put two tubes in there because we end up using a lot of white. All right, so our videos are still running, but they're probably going to need to take a pause here in a minute. And I, I, I kind of went just crazy on the blue <laughs> and <laughs> snow. But I don't think anyone would object. I'm going to put that pure white up here at the top. And anything I'm not 100% pleased with, I just keep moving instead of spending all day trying to fix it and fix it. Mm -hmm. And I just keep moving and I tell everybody, keep moving. You will be surprised later on how easy and quickly we can just make some final uh, edits in the last step. So I'm going to pause, let everybody get caught up. 
And I'll see you back here for the snowman step. My snowman and me. My snowman. All right, we're back. <laughs> Emma's is looking so good. We're back for the snowman. This will be fun. We're definitely going to make more of a purpley mm -hmm. uh, white. Again, I'm just trying to have him stand out a little bit. So if everything's the same color or too bright, you know, we have to make some decisions about how to do that. Go ahead and give yourself a little okay. more white. I'm going to give myself a little more. I was showing him earlier, when you all have trouble, you know, I used to try to open these tubes with this little filling at the top, that metal cover, this way, and sometimes I couldn't get it, so lately I've been just doing that, and then they open a little easier. I had a student in here trying out a lesson once, and she, we literally could not get one of the tubes open no matter what we did. They were standing on it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of these blues. See, we can use these blues in each each step. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of wasting them, we can just mix them into our new formula. Again, I'm going to make a light, medium, dark, and we're definitely going into this more purple color. So, bigger pile of white for our first color. A little less, kind of cut that in half, have half as much white in that next pile, and very little white in our little dark purple pile. Um, I'm just going to reach up here and pull up some of this blue, mix that in. Mm, that got a little dark. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to do? That looks like my medium. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick this, but that is my white, just put this down in the middle as my medium because I just went too dark in the first go around there, my first try. So this time I'm gonna put much less, just a tiny speck. Let me get a little more white. Tiny speck of one of my leftover blues up there. And I'm going to just put, I don't know if y'all can even see, it's like what would be on the end of a toothpick of the red in there. And it's pretty strong, but that's making a really light, cool purple snowman color. And for my medium color, which is, you know, like I said, not as much white, just grabbed a little bit of that leftover snow color. Mm -hmm. And I'm going up here and getting a little toothpick size dot of that purpley red. Okay, that didn't really show up. I'm gonna get a tiny bit more. But when I say tiny, I, I look, I, I already kind of went overboard on that, but I like it. It's pretty purple. I think I'm all right with it. And then for the last pile, I think I need a little more white. A little leftover blue and a tiny speck of the purple red. I want to go a little darker. I'd like it to be noticeably darker. So I think what I'm really going to do here is put the uh, little more of the blue. It was looking a little red lavenderish anyway. So and again, if these aren't quite just quite right, that, your light purple looks good. I think you're good there. You're just getting ready to add a little red to that one to be your mm -hmm. medium. Yeah, I can use that as my yeah. medium. Yeah, just add a little red to that one. There you go. All right, I'm going to clean out my brush. You should try to do that between steps. Just keep a paper towel close by and uh, my little cup of water that comes in your all's kit. Just a little water. Make sure that brush is clean before each step. And now I'm gonna go into the snowman. So I'm gonna start with the darker color and I'll let you just keep mixing there, Emma, until you're ready to catch up here. The um, darkest color, I'm gonna sweep with my brush, pick it up and just slide it along here on the shadow side. And I can see that I need to do something with that. 
maybe. I might be happier with it if I dull it down a little bit. Remember me talking about just a little bit of that chocolate brown can gray something out so it's not quite so uh, neon purple. That just makes it a little softer. There we go. Okay, so that dark purple is going to go down here along with the underneath left side of each of these snowballs. And then a little bit I'm going to put under the cap. And I'm just going to see what this medium color looks like now. I might, I might put a tiny, tiny speck of that chocolate brown in there. Oh, shoot, I went overboard. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> See how easily that happens? I just made a huge brown, so I'm gonna put that away. Been painting 45 years, just to let y'all know it happens. <laughs> it can happen. A little bit of blue, starting again, a little bit of blue. A couple of toothpick size specks of the purple red. And now a much smaller little speck of that brown. Oh, more of that purple red. Mm. Let me see how that looks on the canvas. It's looking a little dull over here. But no, actually, you know, sometimes when you're mixing over here on the palette and then you bring it over here with all these other colors, it, it changes a little bit because color is all relative. It, it kind of, uh, you know, just like if you know someone with blue eyes and they go out on a summer day and stand under a blue sky, their eyes get, you know, twice as bright. So color reflects uh, from all of its surroundings and changes constantly. Is that too perfect? Add a little bit of that chocolate brown in it. Oh. Just a little, like I went overboard. Yes, that dark chocolatey one. I went overboard, so. Just a little. Okay, this is looking like a, just a happy little snowman. I don't think I've ever painted a snowman before. So I'm going around. Um, I have to make a decision where the sunlight's coming from. And I, I've had it coming for, you can kind of see it where the snow's swirling in here and the background's lighter here. And each of the right side of that snowman's lighter. Um, so the sun's kind of coming from this top corner here. So I wanna, um, Put the darkest color on the opposite side of that and then i'm just going to go ahead and grab my lightest color and show you where i'm talking about how it's that's the lightest and i might even come back and put some pure white on that actually i'm going to put some pure white right here on the height of that snowball so see when you're painting an apple or a pear or a, a ball um like the ball of this bottom of the snowman, it's all going to be about where the light hits it, and then there's going to be a medium color and a shadow color, and then you have a three-dimensional round surface, I mean, an image that looks like a round surface. I think this is a pretty easy project. I'm having fun with this. For your very first project, are you having fun? I am. You know what? I've got a I'm having some this. trouble. I think mixing the colors has been the hardest I know. part. I know, and that's part of the thing where I go a little faster, and I know people at home need to pause. And also at home, they've got a written tutorial, and they can also read the written tutorial and make those colors up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. That's one way some of my students do it here in class. But yeah, I'm having fun. Yeah. It, it, The other thing um, is after you've painted a few lessons, you start to learn the color, the names of the colors. Mm -hmm. Even though I try to describe them like the dark navy blue versus the you know turquoise sky blue. Um, there's your warm sienna brown, um, which is like a more milk chocolatey color, and then your burnt umber is a dark chocolate color. So I try to describe the colors because I know a lot of times. The reason I can mix faster is because I know exactly what color I'm going for. And sometimes you all have to stop going like, which one did she say? Because <laughs> it takes a while until you 
know the colors by name. And I, I'm often asked why I chose these colors. Actually, I, I started painting with these colors from with a teacher when I was about 14. When my, and this is a very standard color palette. It's a warm and a cool of the colors of the spectrum. So from um, from yellow to blue, or yellow to green. Um, I have a warm and a cool of each one. See this warm red versus this cool, really cool purpley red. So there's some there's some some color theory as to why I have only these colors. And also, if you had 50, if you went to the art store and bought 50 tubes of paint and put them all out here, you would be so confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just easier to learn with a fewer number of paints. Yeah. And once you've learned how those go together, kind of like when you're cooking, well, you get to learn how certain spices go together, certain ingredients. Um, once you've learned that, and then you can start branching out to some some other colors. Uh, you don't really need any other colors because you can make all the colors in the universe from pretty much this palette here, with the exception of maybe some like neon colors, which then you need to get a specialty color. So, I left a little space there under his chin for the scarf to go in. Baby. Okay, we're going to start on the red hat and the scarf and the little hands, little arm, stick arms and then the buttons and the eyes. So let's start with the red. Of course, I'm gonna make, say let's make three shades. To make it really easy this time, most most all of that red is directly this um, scarlet red that I had you all put out. I might have had vermilion on your normal palette, and this time I, I'm gonna make a note when we start the project and in your written tutorial that instead of the vermilion, which is a more orangey red, I had you all lay out scarlet which is almost exactly this deep. That's gonna be your middle color. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that over here to the left of that and add just a little white, and that's gonna be your highlight color. Add a little more white so we can really see where that sun's maybe hitting the top of the hat. And then I'm gonna get some more, maybe the rest of that pile of the scarlet. And I'm going to get that purpley red that's right next to it. I'm not gonna be as careful this time about getting a tiny bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get a good bit, put it in there, and that is your darker shadow color. So the little hat and scarf won't look flat. It's got a highlight and a shadow color to go with its overall bright red color. And that's the here's we're getting into some tight quarters here. So this is another area where I'm glad that I have this chisel ended brush in the little corners and uh, I have to be a, I can't paint quite as fast as I was going in with the sky and snow. So uh, let's start with the darker color. I'm just going to get a little bit on the tip of that brush. So I'm not nearly loading the brush like I was. I'm going to take just a little bit, see if I just got a little bit on the tip of that brush. Because mm -hmm. we're going to do, a, it's, we're in tighter quarters, so I can't go splashing around with great big strokes. And I'm just going to take the shadow color along the bottom of that scarf. And then maybe the underneath bottom side of this back of the hat. I might, I might just start with those. As, oh, I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow color into the neck of the and I'm going to clean out my clean off my brush from those darker colors and go over here to just the plain old scarlet right out of the tube and whoops I got too much I have too much on the end of my brush uh, I'm going to brush that on as the majority color of the scarf and I'm going in there a little more carefully with it on the end almost like you're drawing a little more than painting now because you've got to get in there, be careful. And I'm using just the end of that brush. And I'm trying to avoid getting into that blue sky, but if 
if you're really gentle with the brush and not pushing too hard, the two colors won't really blend together. So that's a question I get asked a lot. How do you keep from making mud? And it's all about how lightly you hold that brush, hold that brush very gently and lightly and your paint will just maybe skim over the top. I found that a little easier to do this time since I did a practice one last night. And these are all meant to be practices sessions for you all. And I, you know, maybe you could, if you want to try it again, go to the hobby store and grab another canvas um, and try a project again. You'll be surprised at how much you learn and how much you can improve just by practicing. Um, but you know, if you're having a good day, this will turn out really nice for you and you can keep it or give it to a friend. I know sometimes when I'm doing lessons in class and somebody says, well, I, I don't like still life, so I don't like paintings of food or <laughs> whatever. And I, I keep reminding them that these are just lessons for practice. The more you practice, the more you'll be able to tackle any kind of topic that you want to paint. So I've taken the light color and I've put it along the top. I'm just kind of, again, just on the tip of my brush, went along the top. And I think in my dark, I could go a little darker. So I'm just gonna pick up, let me pick up some of that chocolate brown and just tap it in there. All right, now I really gotta get this red off of my brush here. So that might take a minute to rinse that out. If you really ever have trouble getting a color out of a brush and you wanna get it super clean, I, I have on your instruction sheet that just mild dish detergent and actually Dawn is the best at getting any kind of oil out. Um, and try not to let the paint run down your sink. If I have a little dish full of Sudsy Dawn, I do uh, put it on a paper towel and do all the cleaning on the paper towel. So you don't really let the paint run down your sink. It can clog, it can clog up your sink and I've seen that happen many times in many studios. So I said I was gonna clean up all the red and then I went right back into it again. I'm gonna clean it off again because I am going to pick up a little bit of white right on the end of that brush and dab, dab, dab. So see that corner I was talking about where how it's so versatile? I can just dab that little pom-pom on the back of that hat. That was kind of fun. I think I need to get some more white out. So, I think what we'll do is we'll pause the video and in the final step, we'll put in the eyes and the hands and take a look at our final editing. Okay, so we're gonna finish up this step and we're gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that little dabbing of the fur again along the top of the hat too. So the, one of the fun things about oil paint, I presume is different than maybe watercolor, is that we can get so many different textures and shapes out of the paint because it's so structural instead of it just being flat. So we're getting that little fuzzy first texture here with these little taps. And I'm trying not to get too close to the red, just kind of go, gotta go up close to it and steer clear a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I accidentally got some. Yeah, I just did too. It's easy. <laughs> then it's all fixable. So sometimes you see how I have to go slower in these little areas. You know, I go kind of crazy fast at, in some spots. And so there's. There's a good stopping point and we will um, take a pause here before we come back and do the face and the arms. My snowman and me Alright Emma, you know what I'm seeing?
suggest, I'm going to mm -hmm. go ahead and take some of that blue while I'm talking. This one. And just fill in a little bit more around yeah. those arms because we're just going to, you can fill, almost fill all that in. Okay. So I was telling Emma, Emma, just fill in as much as you want around these arms. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that on mine too. Then you won't have to come back because we're making some pretty skinny lines here with that. All right. Wash that brush off one more time. So often uh, I have you all make all kinds of shades of beautiful black, but I think that these little arms and buttons are pretty much going to be a pure black that we can use right out of the tube. So I will put that in the instructions as well to add black to your palette. And I'm gonna take that corner, get a good little amount of brush, uh, paint on the corner of that brush and I'm just going to drop it down. I don't want to push too hard or it'll become light blacks because I got that white there. See how you can just drop that down on top. Almost like you're icing a cake and you're adding another color. If you don't get enough paint or get it on the corner well enough, you might not get it on there just right. Oops, whoa. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> I didn't get that one on very good. The nice thing about oil paint is you can come back and fix everything. I don't know about other mediums, but with oil, there's never a mistake we can't fix, ever. So I've been painting, like I said, over 40 years, never seen a mistake we couldn't fix. So that's why you don't need to be so scared when you first start it out. Um, Now we're going to do the two buttons. Might as well take that same black. And I, I wipe off my brush, even if I didn't think I picked up any white. I still want to go back over to this black, making sure I don't, didn't pick up any white. And then we're going to go back. Dabbing that second button. And again, I'm going to make sure my brush is at that real nice thin chisel because I'm going to draw in that little tiny mouth. And I had a little trouble with that last night, so I'm hoping I can do a little bit better today. I want him to have a cute little smile, and I'm just going to draw that in with the black. Oh, I did much better today. Oh, gosh, I'm <laughs> yes, scared. I hold it straight up and just kind of draw it with a little chisel there. Should I get black on all? The whole, yeah. The whole mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Emma had a good question. When I did the mouth, I did the whole uh, chisel into that brush, the whole thing, not just a corner. And that way I can draw a line. And that's how we're going to do the stick arms too. I'm just going to hold that brush straight into that black paint. And then very lightly just pull it along. Now I probably picked up white. So before I add the little fingers on the stick, I'm going to wipe off. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the other arm. Wipe off. Whenever you're putting one color on top of another, you're probably picking up that color underneath. So just wipe it off. Get in the habit of wiping off each time. I'm going to cheat a little bit right here on the fingers after I just told you all that. <laughs> I think I'm not picking up white so I can get the fingers in. Getting it all across the chisel end of that. Oh, good job, Emma. Thank you. I really think this, this little snowman is so cute. He is cute. And I'm going to say that um, your paint kit comes with an orange, so you can get a little dab of orange out to do his nose. But since Emma and I left that on the other side of the studio, we're just gonna make an orange. I'll go ahead and make it, Emma, and give it to you. We need a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. So yellow and red make orange. That was pretty easy. If you're too lazy to get and walk across the studio like I was just now. <laughs> yellow with a dab of orange. And I'll give that to you. And that can be the nose. Thank you. And I'm going to make sure the black is off of there, off of that brush. 
take that corner, I'm going to dip it into that orange and just drop a little orange nose on there. And real quick before we wrap up the video, I want to talk about um, some things we can do. I, I kind of like when I did it previously, I made, oh, I don't want to be dirty. I made um, almost a blowing snow effect back here. So I just kind of want to make some little swirly strokes, but I think I've got too much black on my brush. And then I also like to soften the horizon, so I'm just going to drag my brush over that line where they meet and kind of blur that line a little bit. So highlights and shadows. I, I added, I kind of wanted to check to see if I have highlights and shadows in nicely. Do I leave any blank spots? And I might just make sure that the shadow at the bottom of Snowman is dark enough to make it really look like he's sitting on that snow and maybe the shadow under his, ooh, real dark. No, I'm gonna blend that in because I got it maybe too dark, but I do like it. Oh, we forgot to take a little intermission to chat and I will just have to chat here at the end, see what you think. I think I'm pretty happy with mine. All right, I'm gonna turn this video off here and we will see you back in the studio here in a minute. Okay, then the final thing we're going to do is add the little snowflakes. So I'm going to take my number four brush that we've been using for the whole project and just dipping the paint in the white, just this corner of the brush, dip it in the white paint. And then you just want to tap, make a little circle as you're tapping and just randomly place some snowflakes. Not too many. Sometimes you'll see if you go overboard, you'll have to go back and get a Q-tip and maybe take some off. So just go slowly. Here and think about where they can go kind of randomly. You don't want to have a really perfect pattern. Just some random snowflakes, maybe different sizes. And that gives us the effect that that snow is falling down and the wind is whipping around. Just a few little snowflakes here. snowman. He's pretty cute. We're all going to be looking forward to spring. Okay, that should be it for the snowman and we will see you in the foyer to discuss our paintings. Okay, we're back in the foyer here, and Emma's finished her first project, so we're going to do what we call the big reveal. <laughs> so, there's mine. And Emma did a great job. Yes. This, is, this was the original that I did last night, so you know, you can always see that mine even looked different one day later. But, Emma, what'd you think? I really did enjoy it. I was very, like, I got really into it. I was like, <laughs> I was a little nervous at first. I was like, I don't know if this but is going to go well. That is the thing. Honestly, it, it turned out It turned good. out really good. Better than I expected. And that's the thing about oil paints from day one. Anyone who ever tries them, like, just get into them. Because yeah. for me, it's that texture of sliding. It's like just icing and butter. And um, you just don't get that same quality with other mediums. I think oils are just so... Um, Thick and they call it the luscious, buttery medium. So yeah. you can kind of get addicted to it. I feel like it's a lot like um, working in pottery or clay because it's kind of textural. So you get that added mm -hmm. kind of um, sensory yeah. with it. So, but Emma did a great job. Thank you. She's got a very happy snowman there. <laughs> and uh, we'll get you come back um, 
where you can take a break from classes yeah, and come back again. and join us. So we'll definitely see Emma back here. Yay. All right, we'll see you all. Take care. Bye. Bye.